Welcome to The Wind Show. If, like our team, you are naturally curious, passionate about Worcestershire, take delight in gaining new knowledge, and above all, love to hear about the brilliant businesses and all the innovation strengths that we have in the county, then this show is for you. When we talk about creative tech, for creative, we focus on three subsectors creative content, creative services, and creative experiences. For tech, we talk about high tech manufacturing, high tech services, and RD. The creative tech sector is worth 720 million to the Worcestershire economy, and the largest creative tech economies are in Bromsgrove and Worcester City, whilst Marvin Hills makes the biggest high tech contribution. Worcestershire boasts a series of high quality assets to support the creative tech sector. What do I mean by assets? We have technology spaces, accelerators and incubators, business centres and co-working spaces as well as a growing cluster of talented, inspirational businesses putting us on the global map. Let's find out more about one of our exciting local projects and hear stories from a few local creative tech businesses. Simon and Anna, where are you today? Thanks Jess, we're here at the Arches where we have a thriving cluster of local creative tech businesses and I'm joined by Philip Ingalls from Waxter. Hi Simon. Uh, what innovative projects have you been involved with? Um, well, Waxter has always been about innovation and um, we've reinvented ourselves over the time since we started. I'm um, going from a games development company to marketing and the last 10 years we will be focusing specifically on animation um, to help companies explain their products and services more effectively. Um, so just before the pandemic we're looking at new revenue streams that we can introduce still focused on animation um, and when the pandemic struck that really informed a lot of, uh, of our thinking. Uh, we saw companies um, being really honest about you know, the problems they were facing um, people are helping each other, and we were thinking, how, how can we contribute to you know, that type of thinking? How can we help with our products? Um, and we came up with two ideas. Uh, the one was to create um, ready-made animations. That's a bit on the stock image model, uh, where the animation is already um, produced, um, and it focuses on explaining the value of a service. So we've done three animations so far, one for accountants, one for bookkeepers, and another one for business coaches. Um, and then we top and tail those with their logo and call to action. And then the other one that we um, are working on at the moment that we're really excited about, is we want to use our unique approach to animation and storytelling um, to focus on employee um, well-being. Um, one of our research projects um, showed that um, seven out of ten people in the UK say they feel disengaged at work. So that's people going to work every day, you know, not feeling enthusiastic about their job and not feeling dedicated about their job. Um, and that's like a big part of your life that's just low quality. So we thought um, what we want to do is um, create our animations to address this problem. It costs the UK economy between 50 and 70 billion a year in lost productivity. Um, due to people feeling disengaged. So we're really excited about that project as well. So those are our two main, main projects that we've invited. And so what does this mean for Worcestershire? Well, we hope that this pro these, both these projects will become massive successes you know, and be a showcase uh, to Worcestershire of the creativity and the innovation um, and the type of companies and creative companies that are here. Um, that people should be coming here for, you know, if they're looking for creativity or want to invest in creativity. And so what positive impact does this have on creative tech within Worcestershire? Well, as we, as we roll out these products, um, we need to considerably expand our production capa capability. 
Um, that means, you know, outsourcing things like um, script writing, um, storyboards, um, animators, post-production editors, um, and especially um, the product for the employee um, Wildbee. We want to expand that eventually to include um, things like video production, games, um, apps, um, and those type of products. Um, so it will be all, you know, local resources working with us uh, to produce these animations. Fantastic. And so what knowledge have you learned over the, the past few months? I think, again, with the pandemic, um, the thing that I've really learned is, is the value of collaboration. You know, of companies coming together to, uh, to work on new innovative ideas. I think before, before that, you know, with our animations, we were very much focused on just producing animation. Um, but with this, you know, this new ideas and stuff coming on board, uh, we realized that the collaboration with other companies just massively expand the things that we can actually do. Um, so we're very excited about having you know, learned that lesson. <laughs> and so for those that are curious to find out more about Waxter, where can they find out more? Uh, the best place to go to is our website, which is www.waxter.com. Um, just one warning, it's a, not a website for grumpy people. And uh, if you are grumpy, then uh, we hope to change that because there's a lot of fun on that website. Well, we're certainly not grumpy here at The Wind Show. And a huge thank you to Philip for joining us. Hi, Manda. Hi. What innovative projects have you been involved with? Um, I'm the lead for the Curiosity Museum, which is an innovative approach to careers for young people. And what does it mean for Worcestershire? It's something we've been working on with Worcestershire Lep and also with the um, innovation team and particularly Proof of Concept Scheme, which has really helped us to get where we're going. We're really hoping to test out and trial the Curiosity Museum with young people in Worcestershire as we feel it's really important to give them a great start in life. And what positive impact does it have on creative tech in Worcestershire? We work with artists because we believe that creative thinking is the way to solve a lot of the world's biggest problems. And we use non-arts approaches such as the Google Ventures um, sprint, pro sprint process, which is a really great way of collaborating and innovating at the same time. And so um, we hope that the arts is a great way to solve some of the tech sector's problems and work in new ways. So what lesson have you learned from this? We've um, developed the Curiosity Museum, which is a is the careers and enterprise company tell us is the is the most innovative approach to careers in the UK and we hope that it's something that will make a real difference to young people across the across the country. And for those that are curious how uh, can they find out more? You can visit our website which is equalvision.co.uk or find us on Instagram which is also equalvision. Thank you to Manda for joining us. Well, I'm joined by Andrew Round here down at the Arches from Worcester City Council. Thank you for joining us, Andrew. So can you tell us about your involvement in the Arches project? Yeah, I'm the, uh, as I said, the Director of Place at the City Council and responsible for planning and regeneration. So very much when we put the, the bid into the Arts Council, I sort of led on that. Um, I lead the project board in terms of uh, with all our colleagues across the various organisations in managing the projects and making it all happen. And so what does this project mean for Worcestershire? Well, it means a lot in terms of you know, Worcester's the, the, the city of Worcestershire. Um, this project adds to that feeling of what a city is, that creativity, that interest, um, just being what a city really is rather than a town or a village. Um, it's also important in, in developing the creative sector uh, in the city, that's the sector we want to see grow. We've got the credentials and the uh, infrastructure to make that grow, so the Arches is very much part of that. You've mentioned the creative tech industry, so what does this mean for them? First of all, I think it's a place of identity, uh, where they can sort of uh, see that there's a place for them uh, in, the, in, in the city. We're going to provide space for them, uh, we're refurbishing seven arches in, in all, that will give space for creative industries across the whole spectrum uh, of, those, uh, of that industry, um, so it'll be a home for them. And so what knowledge have you learnt over the past few months in dealing with the arches? 
a lot of uh, hard work with people like Network Rail uh, in terms of um, and doing things in, in railway arches. It's that's, that's, that's challenging. I think really the, the, the joy also of working together with colleagues from the university, from, from Seven Arts, from, from the County Council and from ArchCo uh, in, in creating this. Uh, you know, I'm a great believer in partnership working and that's, that's what we're doing here. And then finally, for those who are curious to find out more, how can they find it out? Visit our website, so www.thearchesworcester.co.uk. We've got a great website. I want people to come and have a look. That will tell you about the space you are creating, about the festivals we're doing, about all the work we're doing across, across the project. A huge thank you to Andrew for joining us. We are here with Alison Rees from Worcester, Worcester University. Hi, Alison. Oh. So, what innovative projects have you been involved with? Well, I speak as chair of the Participate Workstream. Um, so, we're part of the Arches project, and the aspect that we're involved with is training and development uh, of students and non students within Worcester. So, we've got two suppliers that are really helping us to envisage this, uh, and one is called Advantage Creative and the other is called CC Skills. And we've employed, which I think is quite a novel position, um, an entrepreneur in residence. And our entrepreneur in residence is Andy Jackson, and he's tasked with pulling together groups that are of uh, groups of creatives in terms of industry creatives, but also in terms of new companies that are developing. So what does it mean for Worcestershire? I think hopefully what it means for Worcestershire and its early days is that we will keep the talent in Worcestershire. So that doesn't just mean university graduates, which is close to my heart because I'm deputy head of the School of Arts, so I'm very hopeful that my graduates will stay within Worcester. But it also means um, people that haven't gone to university but want to set up companies are being given lots of support and lots of help, practical help really, on the ground help to set up companies, creative companies. So further down the line, we hope that there might be angel investors that will come and actually put some money into companies that are developing and setting up here in Worcester. And what positive impact does it have on creative tech in Worcestershire? Um, I think we can already see some positive impact in the sense of probably the networking, really, and networking opportunities. So Andy's already got a cohort of uh, creative industrial people that meet, they talk about ideas, they have inspirational speakers. And what's really nice about that is that even if it's not your field, my field is drama, but actually I saw a really brilliant inspirational speaker talking about graphic design and all of the things that he'd been involved with in terms of logos for the Olympics. So a really wide sort of sphere, I think, of interest. That's fantastic. So what knowledge have you learned from this? I think we're learning all the time, but what I like about it is the interdisciplinary nature of it. I think the fact that we're coming from very different creative disciplines and also I think how much support already exists in Worcester. So there's been a lot of linking, obviously, with Wynn, um, but also with there's um, within the Hive, there is a particular group with Janine Downs that are looking at patenting ideas and copywriting. And I think there's lots and lots of different groups that gradually we're piecing together and will come to represent something really good and really properly supportive. For those who would like to get more, how can they find out about you? Um, so, um, Andy and Maddie at Advantage Creative have set up lots of um, social media and they've got a Facebook group which is called Arches Participate and they've got an Instagram group and they've got a Twitter account. So any of those I think you could probably find and link with. Big thank you to Alison for joining us. So I'm joined by Laura Worsfold from Seven Arts. Thank you for joining us, Laura. That's fine. So can you tell us about your involvement in the Arches and Seven Arts? Yeah, so we're involved in the delivery of the festivals programme um, as part of the Arches project. And we also um, are the liaison with the Arts Council on behalf of the, the Arches themselves. So, um, yeah, we're there to deliver the uh, entertainment aspect of what, we, um, what we've got in the project. So what does that mean for Worcestershire? 
Uh, I think what it means most is that we've got some fantastic um, national and international artists coming in. We're being recognised as a place where we can actually see fantastic work um, that involves the local community and also involves emerging talent. So we're really excited about what we can bring in. We're put, putting Worcester on the map for ambitious work um, and working with all sorts of people from lighting um, designers to performance artists to installations. It's a fantastic programme. So you've already mentioned the plethora of people that are involved. So what will this mean for the creative tech industry within the county? Yeah, we're already seeing a lot of employment opportunities. We've already employed um, two interns and two apprentices as part of the programme, so, which is really exciting for us. Um, we're also involving filmmakers, designers, um, technicians, creatives in all aspects of the process. So, And one of the most innovative things is that we're commissioning out projects. So every festival has a commissioned um, project which involves a graduate or a, one of the um, tech industries in the city. So we've got loads of opportunities and we're hoping to develop even more. So it's very exciting. So what knowledge have you learned over the past few months working with this project? Um, I think the knowledge is around working in partnerships, so obviously we've been working really closely with City Council and our other partners and that's been really exciting and um, getting recognition for the cultural sector as, as having an important place in regeneration and in economic impact for the city and for the county as well, so that's been a real um, plus. Um, and also to um, make sure that we can bring in more talent and more um, products really. So it's, you know, the knowledge is around what we can do and what use we can make of the spaces that we've got here. Wonderful. And so if people would like to find out more about Seven Arts, where can they go? Yeah, well, we have our own website, which is sevenarts.org.uk, but there's also a festivals email address, festivals at sevenarts.org.uk, and we're really keen to um, uh, hear more from anyone who wants to get involved. Uh, well, a huge thank you to Laura for joining us. I'm here with Alison Evans from Influential Design. Hi Alison. Hi Anna, how are you? I am fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm um, really good, so thank you for letting me be here today with you guys. You're welcome. So, what's innovation behind Influential Design? So, Influential Design is a design and illustration studio specialising in product packaging and really the start of the life of a business's product. Um, I also help the businesses create brands um, and actually make them other people aware of their brand. Fantastic. So, what does it mean for Worcestershire? So for Worcestershire, I have, well, in my heart really, is um, sort of caring for products, um, starting the products off in a really good place, so using eco-materials, using eco-plastics, uh, and also sort of specialising in different types of um, packaging, as in compostable card. Um, so actually, it's a benefit to the whole environment also. That's great. And what's the positive impact? Um, so really what I want to do is help businesses with their carbon footprint um, and that can actually start with design. Um, so it's right from the start of the product's life and then you can obviously maintain and how we sort of progress with like the use of the packaging um, and the materials that we use. Make sure that you don't ship it all the way from China. We can actually produce it in Worcester and we can print it in Worcester. So let's do that. So what knowledge has been learned from this? So we actually produce a, a, a material that's very similar to plastic it's actually made from corn and this material can actually be composted down the material is called florian and it means that we can obviously eliminate all the plastics that are actually in the sea um, so i think that is really beneficial to uh, people that are actually producing products such as like vacuum cleaners speakers etc anything like that so it's better for the planet that's great. So for those who are curious, how can they find out more about you? So really what I would like them to do is obviously go on my website, um, www.influentialdesign.co.uk. Give me a call um, or you can obviously just, you know, pop in for a coffee and we can have a little chat. Definitely will. Thank you, Alison. We've had a fantastic time here this morning speaking to so many people about the incredible creative tech industry that's going on right here. Thanks, Simon. Thank you to everyone who's joined us and back to you in the studio, Jess. Thanks, Simon and Anna. That was awesome. And it's going to be fantastic. As our journey continues to celebrate innovation within Worcestershire and inspire you with phenomenal inventions and creations that you might not yet know about. Here's Amy to take us on the next stage of our tour of Worcestershire Innovations. Did you know?
Thanks, Jess. Worcestershire's creative tech sector is buzzing and I want to shine a spotlight on this. Did you know? Rob Draper is an artist and designer based here in Worcestershire, working with a range of worldwide clients. Let's have a look at what amazing, innovative projects Rob has been creating for. It's awesome to see how creative Rob is and how he's taken his Worcestershire talent and made it global. One of our local creative inventors, Hamish Gill, has developed a developing tool. Rather than me try and explain it, here is the Pixelator story. One of our county's successful inventors taking the journey from Kickstarter to production is really inspiring and I love seeing how these things develop. Things have really been moving on at the University of Worcester, which is instrumental in inspiring and nurturing our new talent as they break into our county's creative tech sector. Let's find out what the team there have been up to. As an alumni of the University of Worcester, I'm loving seeing some of my lecturers in this video proudly supporting tomorrow's future creators into and around Worcestershire.
I really can't wait to spotlight more businesses on our journey around Worcestershire and continue to add them to the map. By each of us championing and working together to shout about and recognise the importance of the creative tech sector within our county and the opportunity we now have to build our inward investment story, now is the time to come together and join our growing cluster of businesses working together to support graduate retention, collaboration and global recognition. It doesn't get much better than this. And here at Wynn, we have the innovation platform to help you with this where you can connect, gain knowledge, get involved, and just know that we're here and we love supporting you on this journey. Someone involved in a wide breadth of projects and sectors within the county is James Sylvanus Davis, a true digital nomad. I guess if I were to think about the innovation behind how I operate as a solo filmmaker, adaptability is the thread that flows through my journey so far. Back in 2016, when I started freelancing full time, I'd already had a lot of experience capturing live events and documentary scenarios um, in a fast paced marketing internship that I'd undertaken straight after graduating film production at university. So straight away, I had to develop this really portable and adaptable approach to filmmaking and content creation. So when I started working on building a portfolio here locally with other creative and independent businesses, I really tried to gain a wide variety of experience capturing all kinds of content. Um, but eventually I found a pull towards capturing live event and documentary style scenarios. It was then about developing a pace and style of edit for social media to make my work stand out initially. Also, producing content for social media often means quick turnaround, so it's still relevant. So developing an efficient video editing process was one of the key workflows I had to adapt for. As I slowly grew over the first couple of years, so did my technical abilities and my equipment, as I'm sure it does with most videographers and photographers. I really got into how that equipment I was using and the workflow I developed would help me maintain the level of production, turnaround time and creativity within what I was producing. So for me, it was really a case of less is more and by minimizing my equipment, um, I could maintain that level of adaptability I had in a reactive event environment. The next step in terms of my equipment was putting together a portable editing setup, which thanks to the Enterprising Worcestershire program, I had access to match funding in order to buy a high spec editing laptop capable of everything I needed it for. By 2018 and 19, I really had this portable approach down to the point where I could get on a plane with a couple of bags and be producing quick turnaround video content for some huge live gaming events, brands and influencers all around the world. Travelling and working alongside many other freelancers has not only helped me grow creatively as a producer director, but also has given me a network of people I can call upon if ever I have to scale up for certain projects. I still maintained my roots here in Worcester with the local business and creative community, um, and it was great to get involved with the Arches project early on. At the start of this year, I was commissioned by the Arches Festivals of Seven Arts to bring together a team to produce all of the visual content for the Light Night event in January. This was when I was really able to bring the experience I had gained in working and capturing live event scenarios back here to Worcester. And then all of a sudden, the live event stopped. Fortunately for me, I saw the gaming and esports industry quickly adapt to becoming an online event industry and I was lucky enough to have a network of people that I could work remotely with. So then I switched up my workflow again to be capturing and producing webcam interview content remotely. That means my other cameras sat on the shelf for a while. As local shoots have started to pick up, I had the opportunity to work with Seven Arts and the Arches Festivals team again in an exciting creative capacity, capturing some performances at the In Memoriam installation we've recently had here in Worcester. This was another situation which really benefited from my quick turnaround editing workflow, so the videos that I produced could be going out while the installation was still here in Worcester. It was really great to be able to work alongside my girlfriend Helen for this project, who's a freelance drone operator. She captured some stunning aerial shots of the artwork, which really brought an exciting perspective to the videos that people wouldn't have got to experience in person. We've also been enjoying another creative project on the side in building our own campervan conversion. 
The idea eventually is to have a mobile office in which we can be a small self-contained crew and work together on projects, but ultimately maintaining that level of adaptability is something I'd want to continue going forward. Creative tech is a sector that influences and embeds itself across all business sectors within the county and we are blessed to have some truly standout talent leading the way. We can all look forward to the future innovators on their path continually and wonderfully evolving and disrupting this sector. Next time, we'll introduce you to even more Worcestershire innovators as our journey continues through our fabulous county. Don't forget, we're here to support you on your own journey. So check out our website to find out all the support that is available to you. And remember, great things happen when people get together. Next time, we'll be talking... <laughs>